Hey everybody, in this video I'll be starting Frostgrave's The Summoning Bell Scenario, which will be the third battle for my Frostgrave's 2nd edition campaign. Hey everybody, I'm Alan with Bricks and Blocks Gaming, the channel that plays tabletop games using toy bricks and blocks and discusses the rules and strategies that build the foundation for those games. Be sure to check the description box below where you'll find links to some of our other Frostgrave content and timestamps for this video. And when you look there, you'll also find my warband lists that will let you know all the spells, casting numbers, soldiers, and magical equipment that the warbands have. The Summoning Bell scenario is the third new scenario from the Frostgrave 2nd edition rulebook. And facing off for this battle will be Velius the Summoner, which is fitting with the scenario's title, against King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. This scenario features a lot of extra random monsters just wandering the board that'll be popping up throughout the game. And while this is exciting because it can add a lot of extra battles and tough decision making, it also makes the game longer as there's just more figures to move about. And because of that, I've actually split this battle up into two different videos. I've never done this before with any of my other battle videos, so I'm just kind of curious what people think of that, if they think it's a good idea or a bad idea, so you can let me know in the comments below. But before I get to the battle, I'm going to summarize how my warbands did in their last battle, show my table setup, explain the special rules for this scenario, deploy the warbands, and then start the battle. So now, let's get to the bricks and blocks of Frostgrave's 2nd edition's The Summoning Bell scenario. In their last battle, Velius and Celia, the summoners, did well. They got some decent treasures and experience points, but they weren't able to achieve their goal of crushing their enemy, because their opponent left the battlefield too quickly. They moved into a tower for their base, purchased some carrier pigeons to make soldiers cheaper to hire, found some gloves of casting which Velius is wearing, increase the spellcaster's fight stat by plus one, and reduce the casting number of summon demon to 11. They upgraded a thug to a ranger to go with their other ranger, a marksman, and an infantryman, along with three thugs and a bear. And they come into the battle with 25 experience points and five gold crowns in the bank. King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table did well in their last battle as well, though they didn't find the Holy Grail. They set up their base in Camelot, which is a brewery. They purchased some carrier swallows, found a ring of teleportation, which they gave to Tim the Enchanter. They rehired Sir Lancelot, who's a barbarian, and the minstrel, who's a thug, because they were badly wounded after their last battle. And they rejoined Sir Galahad, a man at arms, Sir Robin, a thief, Patsy, a thief, Tim, a tracker, the killer rabbit, a snow leopard, and the beast of Arg. A bear. The Knights of the Round Table have 40 experience points and 45 gold crowns in the bank going into this battle. My table is set up, but before I show that to you, we'll roll to see who gets to choose their deployment side first, and then we will orient the board appropriately. So, uh, 5 to 5, uh, 17. So, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table will choose their deployment side. The table is all set up, and this is the summoning bell scenario, however I don't have a brick bell, so instead I have a brick bee nest that I just got when I purchased uh, this generic bear here. And so, instead of a bell summoning all the creatures, there's a sweet aroma radiating from that beehive that is attracting monsters from all over the place, and that's actually what's attracted the wizards here and they need to get up there and destroy that to get the treasure token that's above it and to try to stop other monsters from appearing to try to get to the honey. Uh, as well as the central treasure token, there are four tokens placed as normal. One here, one right up there, one over here on that parapet, and the other one is back here on the ground. Picking up treasure tokens in this scenario will not uh, cause random monsters to appear, but instead, after the warbands have deployed, each corner will get a random monster uh, placed in it, and then at the end of each round, two random monsters will appear at a board edge um, as they would normally appear if you picked up a treasure token. And then after the uh, summoning bee nest is destroyed, then only one monster will appear at the end of each round. 
for out-of-game spells for Vilius and Celia. Uh, the first one they'll try is Animal Companion. Now, Vilius already has the bear that he summoned, and each spellcaster is only allowed to have one uh, Animal Companion, so only Celia can attempt this. She'll cast this on a 14 with a minus 2. Uh, that's an 11, so they do not get a second bear. I did get a polar bear to uh, go along with her, so if they do finally summon one, then uh, they will have a polar bear on their team. And their other out of game spell is Reveal Secret, so they cast it on a 16, but since they are in a tower, this gives them a plus two to all Reveal Secret rolls. So we'll start out with Vilius casting this with a plus two. That's a total of 15, so he just barely missed the 16, and the plus two kind of cancels out Celia's uh, minus two for being an apprentice. So this is plus zero. Uh, four, they do not find, they do not get a reveal secret. For King Arthur and Sir Bedivere, uh, they cannot cast Animal Companion because they both have Animal Companions right now with the rabbit and the uh, beast of Arg. Uh, but they can both cast Familiar, so Arthur on a 10, uh, Failure, and Bedivere on a 10 minus two. He also failed that. And then uh, they will try to raise a uh, black knight here. Uh, Arthur on a 12, failure, and Bedivere with a minus two, uh, failure. So they had some pretty good out of game rules last battle, but not so much in this battle. The war bands have been deployed, starting over here with King Arthur's team. Uh, we have Arthur, Tim the tracker, uh, Patsy the thief, uh, Galahad the man at arms, and the big bear. Over here we've got Sir Bedivere the Apprentice with their uh, Snow Leopard Rabbit, the Barbarian Lancelot, uh, the Thief Sir Robin, and the Thug the Minstrel. Their plan is to send uh, Robin and his Minstrel out over here to that treasure and send uh, Lancelot up the middle along with their uh, rabbit, uh, it can climb anything with no uh, movement penalty, so it's just going to try to run right up here and get over to that treasure as quick as it can. For King Arthur's group over here, Patsy is going to try to get over here to this treasure, and Arthur might also try to come over here and cast Black Knight uh, so that the knight can take it off. And then uh, the rest of the team is going to head up these stairs, trying to get over to potentially the Holy Grail up top there. And then over here to Vilius' team. Uh, Vilius is set up right here. He's got a ranger behind him, a ranger right over there. He's got a thug here next to his bear and his infantryman and another thug. Over here, Celia is set up next to a marksman and their other thug. Their plan is to probably try to leap somebody up to that treasure and then get over to this treasure here with maybe a summoned demon that can pick that up and then just start sending their team up all these ladders and everything so that they can get up there to that centralized treasure token and take out that bee nest as well. So a random monster is going to start out in each of the four corners. We'll start by seeing what's down there. There's going to be a lot of monsters rolled up for this scenario so for all of my monster rolls, the orange die will be across the top and the green die will be going down. All right, we'll go ahead and roll all four of them. We've got in the upper left corner, we've got eight and nine. That's gonna give us one giant rat. Upper right, we've got 17 and 13. That will give us two wolves. Bottom right corner, 10 and eight. That'll give us a boar. And bottom left corner, we've got a 12 and a 1. That'll be a skeleton. So we've got our giant rat down here in this corner. Over here we have two wolves, and they are pack hunters, so they will be activating together. Down over here we have the vicious, vicious looking boar. That's all I've got to represent a boar. And for the last enemy, we've got a just measly old skeleton over here. We'll start out with initiative for the first round. We've got uh, 24 King Arthur against three, so King Arthur is going first. So Arthur over here will activate with Tim the Enchanter, uh, Patsy the Thief, and the Black Beast of Arg. 
We'll start out by having Tim do a double move. He'll come up these stairs, then up this ladder, and 10 and a half inches will get him right there. Patsy down here can uh, double move. He's a thief, so this slows him down. That's about two inches of rough terrain, so he can get to right about there on a double move. The Black Beast of Arg will do a double move kind of right into the middle of this debris there, knocking over Patsy and himself. So they'll be right there. Then King Arthur is going to cast Possess on the rabbit. He casts that on a 14. Uh, 15. So that uh, rabbit now counts as a demon for the rest of the battle. It has plus two fight, plus one armor, and minus two will. So that rabbit is quite strong now at fight plus five, armor 11, and that move of eight. And then Arthur will do a single move right over here in front of this turn, the rubble. Then over to Velius, he is going to activate with his ranger here and this thug. And the thug will start out by double moving over here and he can get right to the top of that ladder on a double move. That's nine movement units. The ranger will then double move up here, just right in front of this. He can move 10 and a half on a double move, and then Velius will move. He can get right up here. And then he is going to attempt to leap the ranger uh, all the way up to the top of that tower. He cast this on an eight. 12, he got it. So Leap allows for a 10 inch move, so 10 movement units gets him right up here next to the treasure. And I'm saying that from the top of this, they can uh, try to break into that bee nest. So he'll be basically right on top of there since he'd get here and then the last inch would drop him right there. So he will be right there. Next, we'll come over here to Sir Bedivere and he is going to activate with the Rabbit of Carbonog and with Sir Robin and his Minstrel. So first he is going to attempt to cast Possess on Lancelot. This is a hard one, he casts it on a 14 with a minus two. Uh, so that is a total of four, so uh, he failed by 10, that's two points of damage. After that failure, he will run up this little ramp and end up halfway up this catwalk. Then Sir Robin and his Minstrel are both gonna head over here towards this treasure. The Minstrel can only move nine on a double move, but since uh, Robin is a thief, he can move 10 and a half, which gets him all the way up there next to that treasure, so he can try to pick it up next turn. Then down to the rabbit, since this, count, since this is a uh, snow leopard, it is an expert climber, so it can come over here and just scale this wall, and on 12 inches, that can get it clear up here to the top. And then to the left side over here to Celia, she will activate with this marksman, Marksman will run this way, then across part of this bridge to right there. Then Celia is going to attempt to cast Leap on the Marksman. So she casts this on a ten, on an eight with a minus two. Uh, that's 14, she got it. 10 inches is more than enough to get him right up there next to that treasure token. So he will be right there. Then Celia, she wants to come over here, but she also doesn't want to be in line of sight of that rat. So she is going to do a single move right over to there. She also didn't want to come this way in case a monster ends up spawning there, which if you saw my last battle, uh, that's not a good place to be. For the soldier phase, Sir Galahad is going to run up these stairs over here. He's a man at arms, so nine inches will get him right there. Then we'll jump over here to Sir Lancelot, who will double move up this area and get right to the top of this ramp, right there. For Velius' soldiers, he has quite a few to activate here. He'll start by having this infantryman run up this uh, ladder right in front of this thug. This thug down here will run through here to there, and then the bear back here will run past him to right there. All those are double moves. And for their last two soldiers, this ranger will run over here, then up this ladder to there on a double move, and this thug over here will just run right up the middle to there on a double move. 
For the creature phase, I start with the highest health enemy on the board, which is this boar. And uh, I, I'm rolling all of my random movements off camera. And this boar is going to be moving this way six inches, which puts him right there. And from there, he can see that ranger way up there by the uh, bee nest. And so it will move three inches in that direction. She puts it right here. The next highest health enemy are these wolves down here and they move together as one and they actually moved to go straight that way into the corner so they will stay right where they are. The skeleton that's down here in the lower left corner, uh, from right where it's at, it can see that thug there so it will move six inches that way. So it'll move six inches down to here and then double move another three to there. Now this rat down here can just barely see my ranger that's up here. So it's gonna move six inches that way, which will put it right here. And from there, three more inches will get it right here. Now one thing about creature actions is even though it could see her as soon as it rounds the corner, creatures will finish all of their action before they check to see if there's a figure. So. Uh, if this was a player's uh, creature, it, they would probably move it over into combat, but it is not allowed to check for other enemies besides who it's chasing until it has finished its move. So it'll end right there, and Celia will not engage it. At the end of the round, until that bee nest is destroyed, two monsters will randomly appear. So uh, we'll roll to see what we've got. We've got 15 across and 10 down. It's a level two, and we have two ice spiders. And they will show up on side two. That is always the far side for me. Let's see what the other thing is. We've got 10 across and three down to level one. We have an armored skeleton and it will show up on side two, the same spot. So we've got the new armored skeleton and the two ice spiders right over there. We'll roll for initiative. We've got six against six, re-roll. We got five against 13, so King Arthur is going first again. To start out the round, King Arthur over here will activate with uh, Patsy and the Black Beast of Arg. First, he will have Patsy run up next to this treasure, and Patsy will pick that up. Then Arthur will run up here onto the stairs. And from right there, he's gonna cast Black Knight, or Raise Zombie. He casts this on a 12. 15, he got it. The Black Knight shows up right next to him, so he'll put him right here. Kind of piled in there. Then the Beast of Arg uh, will finish running through this rubble, run past Arthur up the stairs right up here. For Velius' turn, he is right over here. He is going to do a single move right up to here, activating by himself. And he is going to attempt to cast Summon Demon and he's going to opt to use his gloves of casting, which will give him a plus five to this roll. Uh, the target number is 11. <laughs> so that gives him a total of seven. He will empower that for four to get himself a uh, shadow imp. So not quite what he was hoping for with that, but that will work. It will show up right next to him, right here. For the apprentice phase over here to Sir Bedivere, he is going to attempt to cast mud down here to keep those newly uh, spawned creatures away from his team. He casts on eight with a minus two. Uh, that's an eight, so he will empower that for, uh, I guess it's a six, so he'll empower that for two. So we've got our mud down there, and then Sir Bedivere will move off this into the safety and cover of this area on his single move to there. Now over to Celia's apprentice phase. So this giant rat stopped within one inch of her, so she can't just walk away from it. So she is going to try to leap herself away. Casting on an eight with a minus two. Uh, that's only a three, so she fails by five. Taking one damage and she'll stay right where she's at. For King Arthur's soldier phase, he is going to start by activating Tim the Enchanter. And since he's a tracker, he can see that ranger up there, and the only intervening terrain is this one little parapet there. So that'll give the ranger a total of plus three for his defense against the plus two shoot. 
The shoot is a six against uh, 16, so that is a miss. Tim will then run up here and climb up this wall to right there so that he can see things pretty well, but he's got light cover as well. And the rabbit of Carbonog on a single move can come up here and climb for free to right here. Can't quite get into combat, but I'll move here. And uh, now it's in combat. Then down to the newly summoned Black Knight. Uh, since he has not gone this turn, he will run over here on a double move. Could move six, it'll just move five to right there to keep that boar occupied. These guys have all gone, so now we'll go to Sir Galahad and Sir Lancelot are both about the same distance from this ladder, so they'll both run up that. So having run up this ladder, then across this little platform, they can get right there on double moves. Then we'll go down here to Sir Robin and his minstrel, and Sir Robin is going to yell charge again, which will send his minstrel into the middle over here. And I can put him way down here on a double move. Then brave Sir Robin is going to pick up this treasure and he's gonna take a run. He can move four and a half, which will put him right in here. And he dropped his sword, but that's fine because he's just running away. Over to Velius's soldiers. They'll start with having this ranger up here fire a shot at that giant rat to try to help out Celia. The monsters will be the green die, so we've got a plus two shoot against plus zero fight. That is a 21 against uh, 15, so that is a dead rat. They've only got one health. The ranger will then take his move right over here to the bottom of the, this uh, ladder. And then we will come over here to the marksman who is going to fire his crossbow over here at Sir Lancelot. This little uh, uh, wall here is the only intervening terrain. There's a plus two shoot against plus five fight because of the intervening terrain. And that arrow bolt misses. He'll use his second action to reload. Next, since this shadow imp here uh, hasn't activated this turn, it will climb up here or run over here and engage the legendary Black Beast of Arg. Then this thug that's down here will run up past Velius, right up into contact with this treasure token. Then this man-at-arms and this thug will run over here. The man-at-arms will head that way and the thug will head over here. Then the bear that's uh, Hiding out down here is going to double move down here towards King Arthur. Then this thug down here will do a double move up here just past Velius onto here. The marksman up here is going to choose not to fight. He's just going to sit there in combat. And now we go to the creature phase. The highest health enemy on the board is this boar, so it's going to run over here to try to gore the Black Knight. Boars are normally a plus two, but on the turn they charge into combat, they get a plus two bonus for normally their tusks. In this case, I guess it's, it's horns. So we've got a plus four against plus one for the Black Knight zombie. Uh, and the Black Knight wins with a 15. They have armor 12, so that is three damage against the boar and it will go ahead and push it out of combat. For these wolves down here in the corner, they will, uh, they rolled to go that way on their random move, so they will once again stand in that corner. Over here to these monsters, uh, all three of these monsters can see this marksman up here. I'll move them one at a time though, because this one can move six inches to about here and then move its last three inches right down there. The skeleton can move four inches to about here and then its last two inches to right here. The other ice spider though moves it six inches to here and then it can see Sir Robin's minstrel over there. So it will, it's closer to him so it will move its three inches that direction. And then for the final monster on the board we have this lonely skeleton over here and it will move six inches over here because it can see Velius.
End of the round, we'll see what monsters appear. We've got 17 across and 12 down. That's still a level two encounter. And 12 gets us a white gorilla. These things are pretty vicious. And that will be on edge eight, which will be down there in the Knights of the Round Table's deployment side. And the other monster will be six and one. So that is another skeleton and it will be on edge 13, which puts us right here. So the skeleton pops up there and then the brown gorilla who we saw in my last battle will show up here and Sir Robin might want to pick up his sword because that gorilla might be coming towards him at some point. Initiative for the next round. We've got 13 against 14. So Vilius is going first this time. For Velius's turn, he will activate with both of these two thugs, and he's going to start out by trying to cast Leap on this thug here. Casting on an 8, a 3. He will empower that for 5. That will put him down to 5 health, but that will also leap this thug right in front of King Arthur. Now, you can't leap into battle, but he can be within an inch so that as soon as Arthur tries to move, he will engage him. And for Vilius' move, he doesn't really want to come out into the open because Tim the Enchanter's got a clear shot at everything and Arthur could potentially throw a grenade. And since he's down to 5 health anyway, he's just going to come down here and actually engage the skeleton. And hope that when the skeleton attacks, he can kill it. Then this thug will pick up the treasure chest, the treasure I guess, and then run down the stairs. He can get almost to the bottom there. King Arthur is in kind of a bad spot here. He can't move because that thug's going to engage him. He's got a bear coming at him. And there's a gorilla that could potentially be coming at him too. So he's going to activate with Patsy, and he's going to fire a grenade at that bear. He casts this on a 12. 18, that is successful. He actually only needed an 11, but successful anyway. So it's a plus 3 attack against plus 4 defense for the bear. Uh, that's only an 11. The bear has 12 armor, so no damage. So Arthur will choose to stay where he's at, and Patsy is going to take a move off over here. Five and a little bit will get him just around this corner here. Two right there. To the apprentice phase, Celia over here hasn't really been able to do much this uh, game. She's going to go ahead and try to cast wall here so that those spiders and things can't see her. She'll cast this on a 12 with a minus 2. Uh, so that's a 10. She'll empower that for 2. So this wall goes up right there and blocks that. And then Celia is going to knock her wall over. She will run over here on a single move. Then over to Sir Bedivere's turn. He is going to climb up this ladder here and come over to here. And from right there, he is going to attempt to cast Fast Act on the Black Beast of Arg. Casting on a 12 with a minus 2. Uh, 16, uh, 14 adjusted, so that works. So they've now cast five different spells, which is kind of cool. And uh, then the blast, Black Beast will activate and attack the uh, Shadow Imp there. So he's a plus 4 against the Imp's plus 1. <laughs> Well, he got a 22 against 21, but a critical hit always wins. A natural 20 always wins. So that is a 21, and it does plus 4 damage. Sorry, I mean that's plus 5 damage. So that gives him a total of 26 against armor uh, 12. So that is 14 damage, which is the exact health of the Black Beast of Arg. <laughs> so that Shadow Imp just took that beast down. And we'll lay it there, so it's kind of out of the way. Well, that plan didn't work. They were hoping to uh, kill the imp, and then uh, send the <laughs> black beast down to engage that bear. But now, Arthur is in a lot of trouble. So now to Arthur's soldier phase. Uh, they're going to have this infantryman run up this ladder. They can get kind of right to the top of the ladder on a single move. So the most important part of my entire battlefield is the one spot where soldiers can't click on to. Uh, technically he's kind of on the top of the ladder, but that way I can get him to stay there and he would be close enough to engage the rabbit. So he will attack with support. So he'll be a plus five against the rabbits plus five because it's possessed. 
All right, we've got 16 for the rabbit and only 15 for the infantryman, so the rabbit wins. Since he was on the ladder, not actually up there, the rabbit could push him down off the ladder. So that's going to put him right down there. He doesn't take any damage from falling. It's not that far, but he does take five damage from the attack. Next, this ranger is going to run up and do the same thing, attacking from the same spot on the ladder. He is now a plus two against plus five. Plus, I sorry, it's a plus four against plus five, but it doesn't matter because that rabbit just got a 24. So against his armor 12, that is 12 damage, and he goes down. And just to make room, I do like to keep my fallen soldiers on the board, but we'll say he rolls down these, this ladder and all the way down there. And then one more time, they'll have this thug run up the ladder. He has to do this on a double move. He'll get to the same spot, and then this ranger will attack. With support, he's a plus four against plus five. And another failure. So that is an 18, which is seven damage, but he is uh, right there at the edge, which will push him down all the way down, I guess, to the bottom of this ladder. So falling off here and landing down there, that's a five inch drop and figures take 1.5 uh, points of damage for every inch if they fall more than three inches. So that is essentially seven and a half damage. He took seven damage from the attack, so he falls in combat. Next, we'll have this imp here. He will run up here, up this ladder, and end up right over here on a double move to stop uh, enemy soldiers from coming that way. Then we'll have this marksman take a shot at uh, Sir Lancelot over there. It's a plus two shot against plus four defense. That is an 18 against a seven. So that is a hit, it's plus two damage. So that is 10 damage on Sir Lancelot, bringing him down to four, which makes him injured or wounded. And then the marksman will use his second action to just move off that parapet right there where he's still in contact with that treasure, but uh, these monsters down there can't see him and his crossbow is empty, so I like to turn that around so I don't forget. Down here by King Arthur, we will have this thug just move into combat with Arthur and sit there. And then the bear is going to come over and attack King Arthur. With support, the bear is plus six against King Arthur's plus three. And the bear got a 23 with plus two damage. That is 15 damage. He was at full health, but that is definitely enough to take him out of the battle. For King Arthur's soldier phase, Patsy has already activated, but the knight hasn't, so the black knight will move into combat with the boar and just stay there. Brave Sir Robin over here is going to run over to here so that he stays out of view of that uh, gorilla over here. And by moving to right there, he's just barely beyond the reach to double move off the board on his next turn, but he has to, that's the only spot he can get to so the gorilla doesn't see him. He does have that uh, potion of speed, so he's gonna go ahead and drink that and that will give him enough move, assuming nothing else pops up. He should be able to get off the board next turn. And then we'll go to Brave Sir Robin's minstrel around the corner here, and he can double move to uh, get in combat with this thug here that's carrying that treasure token. That puts him right there so he can beat the thug over the head with his uh, tambourine. Then Tim the Enchanter up here is going to fire an arrow at this uh, superhero imp there. Plus two against plus one. And uh, the imp defended, he rolled another 20. And Tim has that uh, ring of teleportation so he will actually use that to warp over here. He can go eight inches with that. Two right there to uh, add some support against that thug. And then we'll go ahead and have the rabbit attack the thug. With support, the rabbit is plus seven against plus two. It got a 21 to 19, so that is 11 points of damage that takes out that thug. We'll just push the thug off this way. 
Then with the special rules for this scenario, if a figure is adjacent to the bell, which uh, the rabbit should be right up against the treasure, which I said kind of counted as the same thing, uh, they can make a will roll. They can spend an action to make a will roll against a target number of 16 to try to stop the bell from ringing. So normally it's a plus two will, but it's got possess cast on it, so it's plus zero on this. Uh, so it failed, uh, nothing bad happens though. Next, the wounded Sir Lancelot is gonna run up here and engage this imp. Then Sir Galahad's gonna run over here, and I was scouring the rules trying to find out if you're allowed to run through enemies, and I didn't see anything that said you couldn't, just if the enemy is not engaged in combat, um, they're allowed to force combat, but uh, as near as I can tell, they can run through allies and enemies. Let me know in the comments if I am incorrect in this. Um, so he's now gonna attack with support, so he's a plus five against plus one. Will the imp get another critical hit? No, not that time. So with that plus five, that's a 19. Imps have only six health and it is defeated. For the enemies, starting with this 14 health white gorilla over here, it can only see my thug currently, so it's gonna run that direction. It's gonna get hung up in this rough terrain. Next, this boar down here will attack uh, the black knight. It's a plus one and the boar only has a plus two now because it's not charging into combat. And that is a 10 verse 10. So uh, the boar has, they both have 12 armor, so no damage is done. Down here to these wolves, they actually rolled uh, a direction other than the corner, but that's just gonna put them over here behind this rock outcropping. And actually they have a move of eight, not six, which would put them here. And from there they can see Sir Bedivere down there. So they'll move four inches that direction. So that's where they'll end up there. Over here to these enemies, this uh, spider here can't see anybody and rolled a random direction right into that corner. Then these two here can both see Tim way up there. So they'll head that way. The skeleton can only get to there on a double move. The spider, however, since it's an expert climber, can come over here and climb part way up this to right there. And then from there, we'll go over here where the skeleton is engaged with Velius, and the skeleton will attack. The skeleton is plus one against Velius is plus three. Uh, there's a, another critical hit for Velius's die. So that is uh, a lot of damage critical hit on that skeleton. So that skeleton goes down at the end of the turn. Normally we'd roll for that wall to disappear, but in second edition, you don't roll for it on the turn it comes onto the table. So we will roll for some monsters to appear. We've got two monsters coming. We've got 15 and 16, so that is a level two, and that is an ice toad. And it's gonna show up on edge uh, seven, so that'll be in uh, King Arthur's neck of the woods. And now we will roll for the second one. We've got a five and nine, so a level one, and a nine is a giant rat. And it's gonna show up uh, down at that far end. So there's my ice toad, a uh, crocodile with no tail, and another rat popped up down there. And I just realized this uh, skeleton is blending in here with the snow. Uh, so he can see uh, Sir Bedivere up there, so he'll move a double move six inches in that direction. Which will put it right there. That's all for this video, but when the battle continues, you'll find out, will the killer rabbit of Carbonox killing streak be stopped? Can Vilius' soldiers prevent Patsy from escaping with his treasure? How many holy hand grenades of Antioch is Sir Bedivere carrying? Will a risky move by Vilius prove disastrous? Will both teams be overrun by monsters? And will the spoils the warbands find outweigh the cost of obtaining them? So you can click subscribe or turn on notifications so you'll know as soon as the conclusion to this video is available. And once it is available, I'll be linking it somewhere right around here so that you can jump right to it. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to click like or add a comment. And I want to thank you for watching. I'm Alan with Bricks and Blocks Gaming, and I'll see you 
our next video.